Hi, I'm Ivy Juiva. I'm a doula and childbirth educator here today with my colleague Bliss Young. Hi. <laughs> Bliss is a licensed midwife and she used to own the Sanctuary Birth and Family Center, which was for many years the only birth center of its kind here in Los Angeles. And today we're going to be talking about the safety of home birth and a question that Bliss and I receive often which is the what if question. What if something happens and we're at home? So with all the advances of modern medicine and the technology available in hospitals today, why would someone choose to take the risk to have a baby at home? Well, I mean, I, I delivered two babies at home and... Um, Your own babies. My, yeah, I've only <laughs> delivered two babies, <laughs> my own babies, and you know, I had witnessed my sister delivering with a midwife many years before, and you know, we don't have that advantage anymore of being able to see that this is a normal physiologic process, and the thing that I, where I'd really love to start the conversation is that we are designed to do this. Our bodies are meant to deliver babies with no one else around. And that the majority of those babies would be thriving and the mom would be thriving, right? Um, we have a lot of advantages here in America of being able to have good nutrition, good water, we have uh, prenatal care, we have lots of advancements of having tests and procedures, all which can be done under the care of a midwife as well as an obstetrician. So you're asking mainly about location. You know, why would we choose not to be in the hospital just in case? Right. Um, you and I have both attended births at the hospital and at home mm -hmm. and know that there are complications that can happen in the hospital because of the interventions that, or because of the standards of care or the lack of individualizing what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, so for me as a midwife, I feel like respecting that symbiotic relationship, that flow of hormones that happens when we are N not interrupted in that process. So if we think about ourselves as a mammal, like a cat who would go underneath the house and deliver, right? If we kind of take a step back and remember that we are animals, mm. that there's this, there's this hormone flood that happens in our body. And every time we intervene in that, there's a ripple effect. So sometimes that's necessary. If you are bleeding more than what your body can handle, you should, that should be intervened upon, right? Mm -hmm. um, if your placenta is taking a little bit longer to come than what's the standard, maybe that's not a time to intervene. Maybe that's a time to get baby to breast because the suckling at the breast can initiate more oxytocin to flow. You know, there are little feet on your stomach, help the placenta release. Like there, there's a beautiful design to our babies growing inside of our bodies and that continues through the delivery. Mm. So it's knowing what's normal and when is the time to step in and when is the time to respect that this is a beautiful process that needs almost nothing in order for it to happen the way that nature intended. Mm. So I can almost hear people saying, well, if that's true, then how come people died in childbirth before hospitals? Well, I mean, people still die in childbirth. People die in, in the hospital. People die in childbirth all over the world. People die in childbirth with all of the medical interventions. People die in childbirth or die because of childbirth once they go home from the hospital and have hemorrhages because no one's there watching them. I mean, we have a, how did you word it? We the, have the highest maternal death rate in the developed world. Yeah, I love the way you say that. In the, <laughs> well, and the highest neonatal mortality rate right right um, and we're we're in a country that has the technically I mean some of the most advances in well we spend seven times more cap per capita here than any other place in the world on mm -hmm. maternity care mm -hmm. yet our statistics are terrible mm -hmm. if we look at other countries that have better statistics midwives are the primary caregivers for low-risk moms so being out of the hospital is for moms that are healthy low-risk 
Um, preferably that have had good prenatal care throughout the entire time to be able to screen and make sure that there's nothing that's going to surprise us. Now, does that happen sometimes? Yes. Statistically, um, the chance of us calling 911 and rushing to the hospital with an, a true emergency is less than 1%. Mm -hmm. But I do think that you need to weigh out, as you were saying, that there are complications and losses that happen in the hospital the same as, you know, when you look statistically at the studies that have been done, um, they are very similar in terms of um, loss. Right. Yeah. And so in terms of the complications that can develop at home, how do you handle routine complications that develop at home? Well, I love it. I, even some doctors, like when my clients go see doctors, they, <laughs> they, um, they wonder what midwives do. Like we just kind of like, you know, chant over people and right. light candles, right? Yeah, um, that's what we do. That's what we do. So I'm a licensed medical professional. Um, I, I have a license from the medical board, so that's the same board that licenses OBs. And we are trained to be able to take care of low risk, healthy moms. So um, when we come to the home, we bring lots of things with us, oxygen, IVs, antibiotics, um, a handheld Doppler to be able to monitor the baby, mm -hmm. um, anti-hemorrhagic drugs, and then our, our skills to be able to support a baby with neonatal resuscitation, which is exactly the same training and algorithm that they would use in the hospital. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So I guess I'm wondering then what percent, like if I'm delivering at home, what are my chances of needing to go to the hospital? Let's say it's not an emergency, but what's the likelihood that I'm actually going to get this home birth that I'm planning for? Well, if you're a mom uh, who had a vaginal delivery prior, the chance of you needing to go to the hospital for any reason is about less than 1%. So those emergencies. Oh. And what if I'm a first time mom? If you're a first time mom, usually we say more like 10 to 15%. Okay. And those are non-emergent transport. So more often than not, that's because a mom has had a really long labor mm -hmm. or she has a baby that's in a really funky position and she didn't really know what to anticipate in terms of how to cope with the discomforts of labor. Mm -hmm. um, that more often than not, that's why we're going, is mm -hmm. for rest and an epidural. Okay, so not even really a medical complication. No, okay. Beautiful, well thank you so much, Bliss. Oh, you're welcome. I hope that this is helpful in answering some of your questions about the safety of home birth, and thanks so much for being with us today.